summertime. Many people are outdoors and many people, unfortunately, are struck by lightning, too many. So what we're going to do this week here at Earth Networks, our goal is to keep you safe as always. And we're going to explain a lot about lightning safety for you, how to stay safe indoors, outdoors, for your business, for sporting events, a whole host of topics, including the medical effects of lightning. So stay with us as we head throughout this course of the week. And I think you're going to like what we have. And um, again, Appreciate the great crew helping us out, including Anna, Carrie, and Gilbert here at Earth Networks. To start things off, a little did you know about lightning, just how dangerous it can be. Two thirds of all lightning strikes, all lightning deaths in the United States are associated with outdoor activity. So again, summertime, many people are gonna be outdoors. There's about 50 to 100 cloud to ground strikes every second worldwide. So you add that up over the course of a day and that's three million strikes. And about 400 people each year in the United States alone are struck by lightning. Now thankfully, not all of them die, but many have life debilitating issues that they have to deal with because of that lightning strike. And each lightning strike has over one billion volts of electricity and it's five times hotter than the surface of the sun. So it's about 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So lightning is dangerous and certainly not to be messed with. So that's a little bit about lightning. Now let's talk a little bit more as we head through the next slide about some of the types of lightning. Lightning is simply an atmospheric discharge, a spheric. It's an example of static charge that has built up in the atmosphere and the result is a giant spark. It's where positively charged particles meet negatively charged particles. We have different types of lightning. Obviously cloud to ground as it sounds is when lightning strikes the ground from the cloud, but we also have in cloud lightning that stays in the cloud and does not make contact with the ground. But perhaps one of the most important types to mention is a bolt from the blue. These are lightning bolts that can come out 10, 11, 12 miles from a parent thunderstorm under a seemingly blue sky. So this is a major hazard with people believing a storm might not be in the area or a storm might have departed already. They go back outside and then they could get struck sadly enough. So we are definitely gonna be watching and tracking bolts from the blue. And that's why we at Earth Networks have a total lightning network that can help keep you and yours safe. So let's take you through and explain how lightning actually develops and how thunderstorms develop because today's focus is all about thunderstorm development, safety, and a general overview. Here's lightning development, and this is a thunderstorm cloud that you're looking at. Keep in mind these storms thrive on warm, humid air near the ground, cooler air aloft. So you typically have ice particles in the upper part of the thunderstorm called a cumulonimbus cloud, and the lower part, some raindrops. As air rises throughout the storm, it tends to produce friction. And some of that up and down motion inside the storm will eventually lead to a charge separation. Areas of positive charge and areas of negative charge, as you see in this uh, schematic. Eventually, there's going to be in cloud lightning first. That's called IC lightning that you see right here from positive to negatively charged particles. Eventually, as the storm gets more and more mature, there's going to be downdrafts coming out of the storm. And that's that cold gush of wind that you feel. You'll get some severe weather, unfortunately. Lightning will then strike the ground. So first an in-cloud lightning strike inside the thunderstorm cloud, and then the dangerous cloud to ground strike that we certainly want to keep you and your loved ones safe from. And eventually there could be some severe weather, large hail, perhaps penny size or greater in diameter winds gusting 58 plus miles an hour, and even the possibility of tornadoes that come usually towards the end of the storm. But again, the key is to be able to detect in cloud lightning first, that leads to often severe weather and your dangerous cloud to ground strike. So this is kind of an example of how everything works and comes together very rapidly in our atmosphere to produce thunderstorms. Now let's move on to the next slide, which talks about the detection of lightning. And we here at Earth Networks have a total lightning network of 1,500 sensors worldwide. These detect across a wide range of frequencies, and they're able to detect those high frequency IC flashes, as well as the cloud to ground flashes that are usually at a lower frequency. So we record radio signals here at Earth Networks produced by lightning throughout the world by our many sensors. 
Again, the network-based solution is so important. We find the time of arrival of the radio signal at each station, and then we can determine the location of the flash. In this waveform that you're seeing here on the right, where we have 13 sensors depicted, I want you to take a look at the spherics, or the radio signals recorded. These are these little blips that you see in the amplitude. And you'll see there's lightning strokes or pulses recorded at these 13 sensors. And the sensor at which lightning arrive first, you'll be able to see here, first on the left and then to the right. So at sensor 13, there's the spheric that arrived at that sensor first. Once we know that, we can solve a whole bunch of equations to find the most accurate location of the lightning stroke that produced that particular radio signal. And the location is made possible with as few as four sensors, but we like to have as many as possible to really refine that and get the most precise location of the lightning strike. So here you see the waveforms that we capture here at Earth Networks throughout our network with our sensors. And you can see how the lightning arrives at each one of these sensors worldwide at different times. The key is finding the time of arrival, crunching the equations, and then we're able to pinpoint a location. That's how we're able to do it here at Earth Networks. And there's an advantage to having a network versus a single node. Let's show you on this next slide what I'm talking about because we here at Earth Networks have a network-based solution, obviously. It's real time. That reduces false alarms because with a single node lightning prediction system, it's simply indicating there's a possibility of lightning based on electrostatic discharges. That can create a lot of false alarms. It can also miss some lightning. It's only limited to about 20 miles, a single node that is. Usually poor accuracy is associated with this, and it typically is only going to detect cloud to ground or CG lightning. Whereas with Earth Networks, as I said, the power of a network-based solution is profound. We're able to reduce false alarms, do and see the lightning, detect the lightning in real time, pinpoint locations of storms, providing accurate lead times, and also, our network spans across the whole world, so we're able to really get a good idea where there's lightning globally. Higher detection of CG and IC lightning, and there's higher accuracy. Vendors who claim to predict lightning in advance, well, it's simply guesswork that should be rejected, as mentioned by the National Lightning Safety Institute. That's why, again, we here at Earth Networks encourage you to go with a network-based solution, which we have of 1,500 plus lightning sensors. Let's move on here and talk a little bit about uh, lightning detection just last year in Houston. The power of our network is unbelievable. Just looking at Houston, Texas, we detected last year alone in 2017, 134,000 cloud to ground strikes around Houston. That's a lot of lightning. But if you look at total lightning in cloud and cloud to ground, 1.7 plus million pulses, which is just incredible. So it shows you the significant amount of IC lightning that we are able to detect here at Earth Networks. And that's a critical component of forecasting when there could be some severe weather. So yes, indeed, lots of lightning detected across the entire United States, not just here in Houston, Texas. Let's move on to the next slide, and I'll be able to show you that the indicator of storms is very often lightning. When we talk about lightning, and how dangerous it is, it's often associated with severe weather. 90% of high wind reports include lightning. 94% of tornado reports include lightning. And get this, nearly 100% of reports of large hail or hail reports include lightning. So you get the idea there is a lot to be said with predicting, forecasting, and seeing lightning as far as a predictor and indicator of severe weather as well. Take a look at this uh, map over here of the United States. It shows tornado and high wind reports. And down here it shows those tornado high wind reports without the lightning. So you can see lightning is a big indicator of severe weather. Moving on to the next slide, you're able to see here about Earth Networks and really when we were founded. We were founded in 1993. We're headquartered here in Germantown, Maryland. As I mentioned, we have 1,500 lightning sensors and about 10,000 weather stations. So we're able to see in real time how weather conditions are changing. We're the creators of the Weatherbug application, which was sold in November 2016. We're still the data provider for that. And we also provide outdoor alerting systems that help to keep uh, sports venues safe, like high schools that might have uh, 
fields outside and huge campus facilities. An outdoor horn system helps to keep people safe. We also have weather stations, a greenhouse gas network, and spheric maps, which I want to mention is a very important component because that provides the opportunity to witness real-time weather information. Just showing you some of our partners very quickly, we also have uh, Disney, JetBlue, NOAA, we work with Dow, John Deere, Verizon, the NHL, NFL, Major League Baseball, and a lot of great providers. So taking another look very quickly here uh, at what we have coming up next, which is actually our uh, other partners, as I said, and Spheric Maps here is really what I want to focus on. We're going to take you live and show you what's happening right now across the Tennessee Valley. And you'll notice there is going to be lightning, there's going to be cloud to ground and in cloud lightning, and these polygons, dangerous thunderstorm alerts. So this is the software I'm going to show you here in just a second called Spheric Maps. Let's head to that right now so I can show you across Kentucky and Tennessee where there's live lightning taking place using our Spheric Maps application. This is something exclusive here at Earth Networks, and we're going to give you an opportunity to have a free trial of that as well. So here we go. We're going to take you here to Spheric Maps and show you where there is real time lightning taking place. These are these bolts that you see animating. The purple magenta double arrows are in cloud lightning and the minuses that you see here and pluses indicate cloud to ground lightning. This is the radar that you see in the greens and the blues and also the cell tracks that are indications of storms, lightning cells that we're able to detect here at Earth Networks and then track eventually that lightning cell may have an incredibly high flash rate so that we at Earth Networks will issue dangerous thunderstorm alerts. Those are automated alerts that go out for 45 minutes that alert people of a high rate of lightning that could produce severe weather. That's the purple polygon that you see right there. So again, this is Spheric Maps and we're going to give you a chance to get Spheric Maps for a free trial coming up in just a second. Let's head back to the PowerPoint right now, and I want to show you, in addition to this, also what we have available as well. And it's all part of National Lightning Safety Awareness Week. We are offering this free trial on Spheric Maps. This will give you a chance to visualize weather and lightning information based on our tremendous network that we have, future weather conditions, as well as forecast. Simply email us at info at earthnetworks.com to request your trial. And if you have any questions, remember, in the comment section, you can enter those questions, and we're delighted to take them for you here. I did want to remind you here coming up, we have a, a great schedule of lightning safety going on this week. Great topics, including tomorrow. Lightning safety outdoors is going to be the topic with senior meteorologist Chad Merrill. Be sure to tune into that. I'll be back on Wednesday talking about lightning safety indoors and protecting your home or business. On Thursday, there will be the medical impacts of lightning vict on lightning victims by senior meteorologist Julie Gaddy. And then on Friday, Director of Domestic Sales Mike Albergini will be joining Fred Allen, one of our excellent meteorologists, talking about lightning safety and sports activities. So a lot of great questions, a lot of great answers, a lot of great knowledge will be shared with you here at Earth Networks as part of Lightning Safety Awareness Week. We do want to take some of your questions right now very quickly. I want to thank Carrie, Gilbert, Anna, and the whole team in marketing for helping to put this together. Carrie, have we gotten any questions that we'd like to uh, talk about right now? Thanks very much, Steve, for great information. We've got some good questions here. The first question is, is there a recommended distance to be away from lightning or thunderstorms? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, usually thunderstorms, we talk about the bolt of the blue, can um, have lightning that darts out 10 to 12 miles in advance. So I would recommend as a first step, when there's lightning within about 10 to 12 miles, that's when you can hear thunder. That's when you, could, you should start to get inside and away from windows. And also, that's about the threshold where you should have an alert set for is about 10 miles. Some sporting events and companies may say, okay, a little bit tighter than that, eight miles, but certainly once a storm gets within about 10 to 12 miles, that's when you can worry about bolts from the blue, and that's really a concern. So make sure it's within about 10 to 12 miles should be your first alert. Any other questions, Carrie? Thank you. Second question is, can you explain why in-cloud lightning could be dangerous since it doesn't come to the ground? Excellent question. And yes, you may scratch your head and say, well, wait a second, Steve, it's not touching the ground. Well, yes, but it is a huge indicator of lightning that could get to the ground. 
Lightning that's in the cloud called IC lightning, friends, is so dangerous because it's a precursor for dangerous severe weather. That could be, mean downpours, hail, gusty winds, and even tornadoes. So that's why we at Earth Networks have the ability to detect in cloud lightning to tell you that there's likely to be dangerous cloud to ground lightning later. It simply provides an earlier warning, an earlier heads up to save lives. Third question, most thunderstorms seem to form later in the afternoon or evening. Correct. Why is that? Yeah, that's another good question. Typically, it's like turning on an oven. You know, in the atmosphere, it takes a little while for the atmosphere to warm up and to cool off. When you turn on the oven, it doesn't immediately go to 350, right? It takes some time, maybe five minutes to warm up. Just like in the middle of the day, the direct sunlight is hitting at 12 noon, right? But you don't get the high temperatures until late afternoon and evening. There's a lag in the warmth. And as a result, there's a lag in the thunderstorm development. Typically, the storms, which thrive on warm, humid air, develop when it's hottest, when it's most humid near the ground. And that comes late afternoon, evening. So typically, that's a time to be on the alert for between about oh, 03 o'clock to 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening when you see the greatest incidence of storms and severe weather. Excellent questions. And by the way, we can't get to them all, unfortunately. We're out of time. But thank you for joining us. And if you do have additional questions, send them into the comment box there. We'll get to them offline. We're glad to take them and get back to everyone here joining us on Facebook Live to keep you safe. So we thank you for joining us. We're grateful for your time and attention. Come on back tomorrow, same time, 2 o'clock Eastern, right here on Facebook Live with Earth Networks. We're going to keep you safe as we roll through National Lightning Safety Awareness Week. For Earth Networks, I'm meteorologist Steve Prince of Valley. Thanks for joining us and stay safe.